Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch 2020, our new show following all the news and rumors on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. I'm Damon Hatfield, and this week I'm joined by Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox podcast, Podcast Unlocked. Howdy. And Jonathan Dornbush, host of IGN's PlayStation podcast, Podcast Beyond. Beyond. Now last week we got the full specs for the Xbox Series X. 12 teraflops, hardware accelerated ray tracing, and up to 120 frames per second. But what does that actually mean for our games? Do more teraflops mean bigger and better games? We reached out to a few developers this week to get their reactions to the Xbox Series X's power and some explanations of what it all means. Be sure to check out our full article on IGN.com, but first, let's dig in. One aspect of next-gen games that should get a boost from this newfound power is realism and simulations of things like water, smoke, wind, and hair. Ooh. It's actually uh, Bruce Straley, former creative director at Naughty Dog, told us that hair and fur is going to be huge in the next gen. Give I don't that. think it means actually big. I think it's just going to be, <laughs> they're going to be looking really, really good now. Next gen conquer, next gen banjo, go. Perfect. I, go. I hope in Marvel's Spider-Man 2 when he gets the spider sense, you just yeah. really see every individual hair there. But really though, I mean, yeah. that is going to be super cool because, uh, I mean, when, when fur shading at all first came around, I remember... Mm -hmm. In all seriousness, the first Conquer remake for the <laughs> yeah. original Xbox, off of obviously the original N64 version, it was all, conquered. All the animals were were super furry, and like it looked, it was such a gorgeous effect. I would love to see a three generations later version of that. That'd yeah. be super cool. For me, on this generation, when I switched uh, to 4K on PS4 Pro, one of the things I noticed most when I was playing God of War was the sort of hair and the fur effects they had on Kratos' uh, armor. Yes. And some mm. of it that came, obviously, from animals that he found the pelts of. Seeing that extreme detail was mind-blowing. It was incredible to see. So I'm excited yeah. what they do next generation on top of that. We're going to be in for some just treats all around. So we had uh, Elijah Freeman was one of the developers we spoke with he's the vice president of the games division at virtuous told us quote the quality of the graphics in the next star wars game probably won't be far off from the computer generated graphics in the mandalorian i like that which i mean yeah. that's a that's a pretty awesome bar to be something that we can interact with yeah. uh, in, in a game i mean that's if if that's going to be the ceiling of this or even Maybe even the floor. I mean, we're in, we are in for a treat, for yeah. sure. But, and Elijah also spoke to us about the fact that this stuff could not just be amazing on a visual level, but actually interact with the gameplay. Uh, Elijah told us, yes, improved smoke effects will be great to look at, but the ability to just about glimpse an enemy if the light catches them right after you've thrown a smoke grenade as a new level of nuance to play styles. And just the thought of that for so yeah. many, especially stealth games and so many stealth franchises is just incredible what that yeah. can be. I mean, that takes me back to uh, the first time I remember being amazed by a, a volumetric smoke effect. The Xbox 360 launch, a day one launch title, Call of Duty 2, back yeah. right before Call of Duty really became the <laughs> juggernaut. But Call of Duty 2, day one launch title, and of course that one was still set in World War II. You could throw smoke grenades and it would just puff up the screen white and the enemies couldn't see you, you couldn't see them. So again, like add a couple generations to that and this is gonna be really cool. Oh yeah. That makes me want a, uh, a next gen Rainbow Six with a campaign, oh, Rainbow Six yes. Patriots or Vegas. Throwing those smoke bombs in the yes. clearing out rooms. That that unlockable mission you get at the end yes. of Siege that's just like, it's just a tease. Here's what it could be <laughs> like. Um, okay, going into next gen, we should also expect bigger and more alive worlds. Again, Elijah tells us uh, we can expect, um, because of the power of the Xbox Series X, worlds that are many times bigger than we've seen before and with more stuff in them as well. And you'll be able to move around the world more quickly, perhaps with no loading screen yes. at all. And he also expects worlds will feel even more alive. Yeah, and um, speaking to us also for this piece, Bryant Kennan, the lead developer at Night School Studios, who made After Party most recently and Oxenfree, spoke sort of about uh, an example from uh, After Party, excuse me, that would apply maybe to these future consoles. Uh, Bryant told us, we in After Party, we have a crowd system where every person, every character in the scene has AI, and they're walking around and they're doing various actions to make the scene feel full. Mm -hmm. And that was much more of a simulation at first when every demon at a bar has a simulated amount of drunkenness. Uh, but they realized having all of the simulation going on was just too much for the game to run and it made the game's frame rate chug and then made that experience not quite as exciting. So they, Bryant was speaking to the fact that, hey, if the next gen consoles and everything that's working under the hood can help alleviate some of that stress, they can focus on having those worlds that feel lived in and having a bar where everyone's a little bit differently yeah. drunk. Yeah, David, I want to go back to, you mentioned the quote about big worlds mm -hmm. with, with you know no loading times, you can zip through, there's more in them. I mean, that's... The, the quintessential example of what that's probably going to be 
represented by is the inevitable Grand Theft Auto 6. Yeah. Because that's a game, obviously it's going to be a next-gen game. Rockstar is a global studio now that, that works on one game at a time, or at least that's been their MO for the, like, about the last decade. So, you know, they shipped Red Dead Redemption 2 in the fall of 2018, and so presumably they're a, they're a couple of years into what's likely going to be a, another three, four years before we actually see Grand Theft Auto 6, but that's going to be Series X, PS5, taking advantage of all of this, and they have... They're always the, the, the studio that seems to redefine mm -hmm. what an open world game can be. Not only in terms of size, we saw it with San Andreas on the PS2. Mm -hmm. We saw it again most recently with, with uh, I mean, certainly GTA V, but then Red Dead Redemption 2. So to see them uh, attack both the, the scope issue, but also the density issue, because mm -hmm. their worlds are so full of sure. insane stuff. This, that, this is getting me like extra excited about what next gen is going to be bringing us as yeah. far as game experience. Yeah, on a dynamism note, for me, uh, Marvel Spider-Man going back, you know, from the jokey <laughs> uh, hair thing, but in reality, the idea that they could more densely pack that New York City with types of crimes you have to stop, different types of pedestrians you can stop and interact with. There were only so many in the original game that could occur because obviously, you know, there was a limited amount of things they could do, and so seeing what they could ext extrapolate in a brand new, larger, more dense New York City would be so exciting to see. Now, in addition to all this uh, realism and bigger worlds and yeah. more realistic hair, uh, the developers we spoke to are also excited about what it means for smaller studios having access to this kind of power, what they're going to be able to do with that, um, and also what it's going to mean for more stylized games uh, that aren't going for realis realism. An anonymous developer who is a vet veteran developer with both a technical and creative background who talked to us said that, uh, for me, I like the idea of what we can do on the abstract side, or arcade side, with the uh, smaller indie side, that much power means we can push far more things that aren't in your typical AAA game. And I like the idea, even, you know, I've been playing a lot of uh, Dead Cells again recently. Yes. It's not a realistic look looking game, but it's a beautiful uh, pixel art style game, and it's like, man, what what is a team like that gonna be able to do yeah. with 12 teraflops? How about, how about Play Dead? They've made sure. two yeah, of the yeah. most artistically brilliant yes. games I've ever played in my life yes. with Limbo, and in, especially inside. Let them run wild with this stuff? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, that same dev said to us, whereas before it was a technical challenge just to even get close to that, you know, being able to do all these things at large scale, it was something that we couldn't even think about because it just seemed not feasible. And just the sheer idea that, hey, we could actually maybe attempt some of these things and that burden is lifted off for us because of what the consoles can do could mean so much for devs across the board, whether it is the Play Dead team or whether it's the team at After, uh, Night School Studio, excuse me, with After Party, seeing what they could do as a follow-up because their games are so much about crowds and people talking and interacting with each other, seeing how they could elevate that. You I know, can't wait to see and it. And in console generations past, we've always seen the, the games get noticeably better looking and, and better everything as the generation goes on, and that's in large part because they've had to more or less start over on a completely new bit of architecture as the generation starts. But as the, the uh, that anonymous developer you mentioned earlier also told us, uh, through previous generation leaps, I had to relearn a whole new system. Things like ray tracing now is something you're going to have to learn, but it's not throwing the baby out with the bathwater to mm -hmm. do it. So developers are really going to be able to hit the ground running now this generation since it's, since it's an x86-based evolution off of the generation we're coming out of now. So it's, the, I love this. This generation just sounds better all the well, time. The, the PS3 was notorious for its the cell, cell architecture yeah, yeah. that was so dramatically different from what people were doing on the Xbox side of things and then even shifting forward to the PS4. I think a lot of devs talked at the time of like, hey, this is so much more natural to what we're developing on other consoles. It's great to move away from that. Even though you could see what uh, PlayStation first party devs were doing with that. It is so nice when everyone is working with something they're more familiar with. Yeah. I think we also got a quote about 4K resolution and yeah. frames per second. And that's the thing, we've been hearing a lot about 4K 60 is going to be pretty well the standard, and that's fantastic. But here's uh, Elijah Freeman again from Virtuous saying, the next generation will be offering you 4K visuals at 60 frames per second combined with 1080p at 120 frames per second. Games are going to look slick and buttery smooth at high resolution. So uh, it's the idea that, yeah, if uh, you want to dial it down a little bit, uh, and, and if you've got the TV to support 120 frames per second, and maybe you're playing Doom 3, the, whatever the you know the next yeah. the next Doom after the Eternal is about to come out, or or something that's a that's a real you know high high speed high skill competitive 
action kind of game, mm-hmm. you might want to just dial it up in the same way that PC gamers now are playing uh, on, on 144 hertz yeah. monitors. So uh, some, some really interesting options moving forward here. Well, speaking of just that, uh, last week we asked the IGN audience, will you be upgrading your TV to match your shiny new next-gen consoles? Yusuf has our poll results. 13% of you are willing to upgrade but are just looking for a deal, which I have to say is the category that I fall into. What can I say? I'm a frugal shopper. 15% of you are going top of the line and grabbing the best of the best, while 28% of you are content with your 1080p TV. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And finally, with 43%, nearly half of you are the upper echelon of our audience who are ahead of the curve and already upgraded. What do you guys think? Are you planning to upgrade? Uh, thanks, Yusuf. Yeah, I actually did upgrade over uh, Black Friday. Got myself a new uh, uh, 4K Samsung TV that I'm really nice. happy with. I think nice. you did something similar, right? Did you go Q- QLED? Yeah, or, I did the QLED. Uh, okay, yeah, which is, which is the sort of fancy way of saying it's LED, but, yeah. but extra nice. <laughs> but there's yeah. a Q. They're, yeah. they're clearly trying to make... I, I did go ahead and go full OLED uh, because I, I'm, I've had my TV, my 1080p plasma Panasonic for... Uh, eight something years, yeah. the entire generation, and I just wanted to do it once mm-hmm. so that I, I wouldn't even be tempted in the sure. next generation. I just want something that's going to serve me well. OLED is is super well regarded. It's, oh yeah, watch out for burn-in, but we were at, <laughs> quick story, we were at id Software doing our Doom Eternal IGN first, and uh, a, a an OLED TV was accidentally left on, paused all night long. When we came in and we noticed it the next morning for the day two of our visit, we were like, oh no, this is <laughs> this is really bad. And we, no, TV was fine. No, so it's not to say, don't don't test that theory, but yeah. uh, anyway, yeah, I went OLED and boy, have I been super happy with it. I did the, uh, the LG B9. Hmm. Which uh, which has just been phenomenal so far. Very excited now to hook the Series X and PS5 up to it. How about you, Jonathan? Uh, I actually upgraded to a 4K TV back in 2018. Wow! Uh, yeah, for, early uh, ahead of the curve. Ahead of the curve yeah. uh, I decided to upgrade alongside when I bought a PS4 Pro. It was actually I was playing God of War for review, and I played it on a 4K TV in the office. And I sort of did the switch from my 1080p TV at home, and then switched to 4K here. And granted, it's not true 4K with the PS4 Pro, but I just saw the difference in the detail and the fidelity of the world and was it said there as I was playing it oh I need to buy a, a new TV and that made me go out and buy that 4K TV. Not a world do it. Yeah. Worth, yeah. Game worth doing it for. Not it. a bad one for it. Well for those of you out there who do plan to upgrade your TV here's IGN's tech editor Bo Moore with a quick explainer on what features will help you get the most out of your next gen console. Thanks Damon. So we've talked a lot about teraflops but all that power really isn't worth much if your TV can't keep up. Our poll says that more than 70% of you either already have a 4K TV or are planning to upgrade, but 4K isn't the only feature that TVs will need to fully take advantage of next-gen consoles. If you're upgrading your setup, the key features to look for are a 120Hz refresh rate and a variable refresh rate. But why should you care? The refresh rate of a display is the number of times per second that the image on screen is updated. The faster it updates, the quicker it can display new info from the game, which is being piped through at the game's frame rate. That's the number of frames per second being sent from the game to the display. In general, higher fresh rates mean smoother gameplay, but it's especially important in fast-paced shooters like Doom, where you need a high frame rate to keep up with the speed of the action. If the frame rate of the game and the refresh rate of the display don't match up, then you get screen tearing. It looks like this. Up until recently, 60 frames per second has been the gold standard for games, because most TVs have a 60 hertz refresh rate. This means that in order to keep the screen from tearing in the middle of the action, games, especially console games, would lock the frame rate at 60, or even worse, 30 frames per second to match the TV refresh rate. This is called V-Sync. It was great for visuals, but being locked to 60 FPS meant that games that really benefit from a higher frame rate, like Doom, would feel pretty sluggish. In recent years though, games have been moving away from a 60 FPS lock. For one, displays have gotten faster. Top-end PC monitors go as high as 300 Hz now. Two, many displays are now capable of variable refresh rates, or VRR for short. VRR means the display can detect the frame rate of the incoming video signal and sync its refresh rate to match. The move to 120 Hz means that up to 120 FPS gameplay will be possible. Of course, don't expect many games to actually hit 120 FPS at 4K. That is a tall order even for the Series X's 12 teraflop GPU. Instead, expect most games to be in the 50 to 70 FPS range at 4K, 
or 80 to 120 FPS at 1080p, depending on how visually demanding they are. The Xbox One X and One S added VRR support in 2018, and it's confirmed for the Series X. So what about the TVs? Flagship sets like the Samsung Q90T, the LG CX series, and Vizio P-Series Quantum X are all equipped with VRR and 120Hz refresh rates. There's also plenty of mid-range sets like the Vizio M-Series and LG BX series that will offer the features that next-gen gamers will be looking for. Budget sets, on the other hand, are a totally different matter. These gaming-centric features will be one of the main things that TV companies will use to differentiate their mid- and high-end sets from their budget fare in 2020 and beyond. So if you want to get the most out of your new console, you might have to drop some cash. Back to you, Damon. Thanks, Bo. Now that we know that Xbox is introducing new features like Quick Resume and Smart Delivery, we want to know which next-gen feature do you want most? Make sure to vote at IGN.com and we will share the results with you next week. And that will do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch 2020. Thank you, Ryan, Jonathan, Bo, and Yusuf. We'll be back next Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern with more PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news. See you then. We need your help and your vote to determine the best video game character of all time. Help us decide in our Power Ranking Face-Off vote. Head to IGN and let your voice be heard.